Okay, everybody, here's the scenario. A classic band, one of your favorites from when you were a kid or when you were in high school or college or whatever, uh, just announced that they're getting back together after breaking up, say, a decade ago or 15 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever. Now, I'm using the word classic in a very, very loose sense because specific bands or specific genres aren't really relevant to this discussion. You're excited in a nostalgic sense, of course, but also where there's a little bit of curiosity, like, well, how many members of the band are actually coming back? Is it everybody? And if it's not everybody, well, how many members need to actually be there for you to consider this an actual reunion? Is it even the actual band? Hey everybody, it's me, your buddy Dave, the host here at the Dark Stuff channel. Thanks a lot for checking out the new video. So that's the question. And uh, the origins of this video come really from just a few weeks ago. I saw the band Black Flag in concert. Legendary punk rock band, you know, pretty much the textbook definition of hardcore. Existed from 1976 to 1986 is when they initially broke up. big Black Flag fan, and I own all the old records. I even saw the Rollins Band a couple of times back in the 90s. But when this show was initially announced, I was pretty dismissive of it. It's like, okay, I don't know if I want to see Black Flag. It's only got one original guy left. It's got Greg Ginn. Granted, he is the founding member, the guitar player, the primary songwriter, the architect of the sound, but it's just him and and who, who are the other guys? <laughs> remembered that I thought this exact same thing in 2016 when Gang of Four was going to come to town. I dismissively referred to them as Gang of One because at that time the only member of the classic lineup of Gang of Four uh, left was Andy Gill, rest in peace. It was Andy Gill and three younger members. And yeah, I was just like, Gang of One, you know, how, how good could this possibly be? And I have to tell you that I was thoroughly uh, impressed with the Gang of Four show that made me consider this time going to see Black Flag. What I'm hoping for in response to this video is not any type of legalistic argument, okay? I don't care who has the rights to what trademark or this or that or whatever or who sued this member or that member to retain this or that, you know, legacy name or what. It just, that doesn't matter. I'm not a lawyer. I'm a music fan. And what I want out of this, the, the response to this video is really from a fan's perspective, okay? Are there some bands that if it's not all of the classic members, then it's not really the band no matter what? Are there any bands that you'd actually prefer a tribute band to what the current version of the band actually is? I mean, certainly gonna be a lot cheaper seeing a tribute band, right? Now there's two sort of scenarios here that I'm, I'm entertaining in the video, like, okay, there's uh, there's the, a classic band breaks up and reforms, 
Um, and then how many members are needed for you to reach, still call it the band, okay? And then the other scenario is, what if a band has been around for 30, 40 years or whatever, and through death, through retirement, through firings or whatever, y- y- the lineup has dwindled down and now it's like just one original guy and they're still using the name. So let's say an example of that could be Megadeth. Uh, there's just one original member. That's Dave Mustaine, Soul Asylum. Dave Perner, he's the only original member left. Obviously, if someone from the band died, they're not coming back. Okay, there's a a valid, perfectly valid reason why that person is not going to be there at the reunion show. And getting caught up in who's an original member of the band is kind of complicated, so I've been purposely using the word classic. And the reason why is because sometimes a classic lineup is more significant than the original lineup. Think of like... Deep Purple version 2, 2.0. You know, they had an original singer and bass player from the early days, and nobody thinks of that as, you know, the original, it's Deep Purple. So back to the Black Flag scenario, I looked this up, and here's the current lineup, okay? Greg Ginn on guitar, Mike Vallely on vocals, Harley Duggan on bass, Charles Wiley on drums. I'll admit, prior to that show, I didn't know any of those guys little bit of uh, internet research says that Vallely has sung with the band off and on since about 2011. Um, and this has been the lineup since about 2019. Two past members of Black Flag, guys with names you've heard of, you know, like Keith Morris, the, the original singer, um, Ron Reyes, the second singer, Des Kadena, the third singer, Henry Rollins, the fourth singer. So you see where I'm going. Chuck Dukowski played bass, Kira Rossler played bass, Sel Varelta played bass. All these different people played. And I guess it just sort of made me think, like, why was I holding on to this precious notion that Black Flag was only that time in 1986 when by the time they, you know, broke up in 1986, there was only Greg Ginn and three other people that weren't there at the beginning anyways. So here are some groups that I have seen that that fit into this. So Squeeze. And to tell you the truth, um, if you tell the gun to my head I couldn't tell you any of the band members names from the old days the late 70s early 80s except for Difford and Tilbrook so the fact that they weren't there didn't make the hugest difference to me I really enjoyed the show I think it was important that those two were there but did it matter that the guy who played bass on Cool for Cats or whatever wasn't there Uh, the replacements legendary reunion in 2013 to 2015 that only had two original members uh there that just paul westerberg tommy stinson i really loved that i know a lot of people who dismissed that and said it wasn't really a reunion but it sure felt like it to me swerve driver They broke up in the late 90s when they got back together about 10 years later. They've never had the same, all the same guys. The the rhythm section has been different. You know, Jimmy and and, uh, Adam Franklin are there, but it's different people playing. Uh, Still really, uh, uh, you know, didn't bother me. Pantera. Here's where we're getting into a dicey area, okay? So Pantera's back now. They have the original singer. They have the original bass player. Of course, Dimebag Daryl and his brother, who played drums, are both dead. So they can't come back. 
And so now we have this reformed Pantera, and that's that's causing some controversy. Is it really Pantera if Dimebag Daryl's not there? I don't care enough about the band to really get all caught up in that, so uh, I'm just wondering, just throwing that out there. Steely Dan. I mean, hell, they're a freaking duo. One of the guys dies, they're still going. Is, does that matter to you? Uh, the e- Eagles. Um, well, who gives a shit about the Eagles? I hate them, so we're not even going to discuss them. Don't mention them in the comments. L.A. Guns is out there right now. They just put out a new record. There's actually two versions of L.A. Guns. That's a whole. That's like a third scenario. What happens if there's two versions of the same band? You know, there's L.A. Guns, and then there's Riley's L.A. Guns, and each version features two members from the classic lineup from the late '80s. One version, the Riley's version, features a drummer and the bass player. And just the L.A. Guns, L.A. Guns features the singer and the guitar player. I mean, it seems to me if you're just going just for a sound, it would probably go with the one that has the singer and the guitar player. But again, that's a totally different scenario. Who's in that band? What is, that? is that really L.A. Guns? I mean, what's your opinion? Sticks, a band I've talked about somewhat recently in a, in a video. They're still out there. Technically one original member, James J.Y. Young. Of course, Tommy Shaw was there in 75 and... I guess he's considered a classic member. So again, you're not getting caught up in who's an original versus classic. They have two classic members in that band, and they're still going. Don't see any sign of them slowing down. Journey. Been in the news a lot lately. They're down to one original member, and that's Neil Sean. Uh, You could say Jonathan Cain, probably from the classic era, uh, early 80s. But they recently got rid of the drummer. They recently got rid of the bass player, uh, who were classic members of the band. In fact, Ross Valerie, the bass player, is a funny one. All right, so to wrap up this video, um, I just wanted to throw this question out there. This is really open-ended. What do you think? Do you have a hard and fast rule? I sort of thought I did until this Black Flag show, which was really, really good. So I can't really say that, uh, that my rule is something that I need to stick to. Would it be great if every band reformed with all the original members? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I feel like I've made the point. Look, I'm just looking for, op- for uh, this is sort of open-ended. I want people to give their thoughts. Would, do, do you have a hard and fast rule? Do you not really care? Is it situational? Does it, if they have the name, is that it for you? That's just all that matters? You could go see Foreigner, for example, even though they have zero original members. I mean, I, I'd have a difficult time with that one. That might be a bridge too far. No, no members. Um, I wouldn't go f- to see Foreigner anyways, but the, that's not the point. All right, everybody, that's all for now. Take care. Bye-bye.